Thank you. I want to thank everyone and LACNIC for the invitation for uh, uh, in this celebration of IPv6 together with Ivan, my colleague here at work. So we, we are with the entire team, we represent the entire team and the document that we present in the uh, edition to 2021, the IPv6 challenge. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure. I thank uh, the opportunity for being able to present. I'm going to speak a, a bit uh, of IPv6. Um, I, so, so let me then present, this is introduce Unicamp. For you, to give you an idea of the size of the university. This is a public uh, university in uh, Sao Paulo. It was founded in 1966, and it is one of the top three universities in Latin America. And it is recognized as being number one in the number of patents developed and uh, the faculty is uh, very highly qualified and uh, also highly trained uh, um, speakers. And, uh, and uh, we have 20,000 undergraduates. And if we add the schools and well, we we have about sixty thousand students uh, in at Unicamp. Here, I'm showing a Google Net to give you an idea of the distance of our campuses. The main campus in Campinas, and then we have other series in Limeira, and uh, in Cava. So if we add all the schools and institutes and the research centers and the universities that Unicamp manages and all the areas, all the administrative areas, we have about 90 areas at Unicamp. We are there. We uh, provide services to over 5 million people distributed, uh, that's our coverage, in more than 90 neighboring cities, neighboring Campinas. It's a very large university. And there you see the difficulties when we speak of implementing a data network, especially with the new protocol as a building to be able to fix all that to coordinate all that. Here, we put together a timeline of uh, IPv6 Unicamp, 10 years of IPv6 at Unicamp. We are celebrating the 10th year. So it all started in 2010 with uh, the first uh, allocation of slash 32 IPv6 um, for, by, uh, that Nick BR allocated to our university. Right after that, in 2011, we had a working group that was created to be able to continue with IPv6. In 2012, we participated in IPv6 launch, as many of the people attending today's webinar, and with a, a talk by Lee, too. And at the time, we we had a dream of uh, implementing IPv6 in our network, but we were afraid of being attacked and we didn't know how things would work until we placed some units. And fortunately, we received the first logs in the Apache server, and that was very interesting. And we were we people were happy to see that we had IPv6 uh, connectivity. And then in 2013, we started you with the first uh, dual stack desktops. 
And in 2014, LACNIC reserved the last IPv4 blocks. IANA delivered LACNIC the last. In 2015, we increased our participation in IPv6 forums and in uh, NECBR trainings with, uh, the entire, with all uh, the professional teams. And in 2016, we increased our IPv6 services. In 2017, uh, IPv6 uh, um, became a standard in 2018. We celebrated 10 years of IPv6 in Brazil and also our university also participated in LACNOG 2018. In uh, 2019, we started to implement uh, telephones using uh, VOLP with IPv6 and the first dual stack Wi-Fi. In 2020, we uh, came back to LACNOC 2020. We participated online this time, already during the pandemic, to implement uh, 464X LAT uh, Wi-Fi mechanism. And then in 2021, that's today, we completed 10 years from the creation of uh, the IPv6 working group at the university. And we were pleased to, we were pleasantly surprised to see that we uh, won the uh, IPv6 uh, challenge. Uh, so this is a very interesting uh, story. And Ivan now will tell you a bit what we presented at uh, in the document for the university. Well, thank you. I'm going to talk a bit about the Unicamp network. It's uh, used daily by about 60,000 users. In this uh, community of 60,000 users that uh, go through the university on a daily basis, there are students, teachers, researchers, employees, and visitors too. Such uh, people of the health sector or the education, and there are also cultural and sport activities. So there's a range of different users. We have about 20,000 uh, physical network uh, devices and about 30,000 mobile devices in uh, the uh, Unicamp network. The internet links is provided uh, by RNP, the National Network for uh, Education and Research in Brazil. And um, the logical connectivity is uh, with the RNP's uh, backbone, with the ANSP network, and some uh, IXBR exchange points in Sao Paulo and Campinas. In the route service, we learn about our other organizations, and we also do bilateral exercises with uh, well with uh, Amazon, etc., Google. So the participation of the technical uh, uh, community of uh, Unicamp, um, the participation of the technical community in these events of IPv6 uh, raised awareness. So in, in uh, at the university about the importance of IPv6 to um, and the importance how important it it would be for Unicamp to um, implement it fully for the benefit of the researchers and it's important for it to grow and to, we exchange uh, information about ex the experience in IPv6 events so we took all um, the information that we uh, from those events and we shared it um, to explain that this would be the implementation of IPv6 would be one of the strategic projects in our portfolio so as to the external routing um we also provide uh, several services and uh, uh, we implement, such as DNS, NTP, uh, web, 
uh, database and firewalls uh, for the universities, uh, the IPS, uh, well, Active Directory, and uh, the VoIP services. And also, we, some units could deliver web services uh, um, in the DHCP version 6, uh, OSPV uh, version 3 routing. So that uh, we gained a lot of experience at the university. Now, talking about routers, um, it, um, this was started in uh, 2009 and we in a, a community of there are 10 units that are already working with uh, IPv6 um, and there are several units that uh, already work uh, with uh, Wi-Fi networks with your stack in the UD. Edu Rome project with a 464x flat. Um, at a, we have a centralized, it's, it's, it's centralized by Wi Fi controllers that, and uh, the limitation of the routers in dealing with the increase in route tables, both in IPv4 and IPv6, is due to the reduced size of a uh, TCAM memory. In the, at the, in the units, the units offer IPv6 um, with Slack. I wanted to talk of a problem that we had to face. It's a situation that we had uh, with the new routes the growth of the routing table with the two with both ipv4 and ipv6 so we had problems with the memory as soon as ipv6 started having access to more ipv6 prefixes and ipv4 uh, ipv4 um was uh, is now being delivered with smaller blocks because of the depletion. So we saw an increase. Uh, oh, ooh, ooh, so and uh, the ones uh, the what we had was very old from uh, 2011, 2012. So now the. Um, at the beginning, we had instability in the tables because of the routing. So we had to put some limitations. So we, um, we managed to get resources to purchase two new routers. And we believe that with that, we'll be able to solve the problem of the growth of a uh, the needs. So an effort was made then to update the academic systems. I'm going to talk about the academic systems. Unicamp has made an effort then to migrate in the platform, um, uh, migrating legacy physical to virtualized environments hosted in the cloud with uh, x86 platforms and preferably using open source solutions, giving people the possibility to work with more modern platforms. So um, but there are still systems that have little IPv4 addresses in their codes and compromise the operation via IPv6 only. For, well, so we need, um, in some cases, we need translation or communications.
So we accompanied the migration and the apps are opening, are working, operating with open source with IPv6. Unicamp also invested to create a, a private cloud before 2010. Uh, uh, before that, IPv6 was not being treated with enough care. So at the time, they uh, elected uh, a dual stack that did not uh, work with IPv6. So the problem was that the, the version that was used had its limitations for IPv6 uh, network. And uh, this limitation in, uh, prevents Unicom's cloud client divisions from having services running on IPv6 such as websites, for instance. Uh, so people, um, now there are portals, there are links connected to the, uh, that uh, belong to the university or that are linked to the university that couldn't use IPv6 at the time. So, Let's talk about the routers. So I wanted to, to highlight the uh, issues that we had when adopting IPv6 on devices. Initially, we couldn't uh, get a dynamic addressing with, uh, and uh, we talked to the vendors so that they would implement the features and the software. And it takes some time, but finally we managed to have the vendors make those changes. And that was essential for IPv6 so that uh, we could adopt IPv6 on devices. So now there's a good percentage of the university that using IPv6 only. So now I'm going to talk about Wi-Fi. Well, with, we have 900 access points and our Wi-Fi is quite robust. And we reach the highest volume of IPv6 traffic at the main Unicamp campus. We have some distributed in units. In 2020, we had 28, over 28,000 users and 15,000 visitors. In 2019, we had even more. We had 37,000 and uh, 30, almost 35,000 visitors. So, because uh, there at the time people visited live. So that is to give you an idea of the size of the network. I decided to use the IPv4. The instability of IPv6 led us to adding the IPv6 momentarily outside in order to conclude this. So the trend we saw was that the IPv6 traffic already exceeded IPv4 traffic on that occasion. Henry will refer to other things. Okay, thank you very much. Now going back with the Wi-Fi network. We had an interesting experience here at the campus where I work. 
there we use the 464x latch transition mechanism. This is at the Wi-Fi network of the university using the Joule tool. Many of you are familiar with this tool. This is something that we implemented successfully and could reach a total of 3,000 people around the campus. We also extended the data network, expanded the data network, and catered for two research laboratories at the School of Applied Sciences. For this purpose, two OLTs and 50 ONUs were recently acquired. We configured these with IPv6 using fiber optic technology through to the final user. This was an interesting experience. This here is an example of the new services that we have at the university. They no longer have the capacity of being IPv4 only. All the services, services are especially focused on IPv6 as a result of the pandemic. We had a very important need of accessing the remote devices from the home, from the laboratories. So we made these configurations through a remote access portal. We called it Apache Guacamole. And this was fully implemented in IPv6. This provides remote access to the desktop systems and servers, as well as a solution to enable tablets and smartphone access. This is for all the professors. This is exclusively using IPv6, and the experience was very good and very positive too. As regards the IPv6 challenge, we encouraged everyone to participate and we had very great experiences. As an opportunity to get to know and document all the IPv6 projects that we currently have. And also this gave us an opportunity to document many things. So this really was an incentive that we had. This really supported the, D the IPv6 deployment at the university. Now the challenge also brought visibility to the university and the international community, highlighting the use, the importance of the use of IPv6. So this is the experience we had with the new protocol at the university. So we are here at the disposal of helping other institutions to disseminate best practices so that we can have a massive adoption of the IPv6 protocol. I would like to thank once again LACNIC and all the members of the ninth IPv6 Challenge Committee. We'd also like to thank for all the training we have received from LACNIC campus, the webinars, the training courses offered by NIC BR as well as NIC MX. We'd also like to thank the Computing Center and the School of Applied Sciences, including all the IT teams and professionals at UNICAMP. This is a very beautiful picture of the campus taken at night. And I wanted to include this photograph. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the people 
that were mentioned and who also helped us in the organization of this activity. These are the people who helped us with the configuration of IPv6 at the beginning of the project, as well as all the other professionals that worked, the network guys, the technical people. So each one contributed to making this a success. This was real teamwork. And over these years, many have participated. They really participated in this project with us. This is a team, this is a contact email in case you should have any questions. You can send us an email and we can continue sharing our work with you. And uh, we want to, to thank you for uh, collaborating in the implementation of IPv6. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Ivan. Indeed. Well, we have a few minutes left to answer some questions uh, by the audience. We have a question that is in Portuguese. Wait a second. Uh, I want uh, Caro Mendes, uh, who's going to Felipe Correa ask, um, do you all, all, already have uh, um, uh, IPv6 implanted in the final uh, devices? Uh, you mean, the well, in the mobile devices? Notebooks, uh, mobile phones? Yes. Yes, we do. As I said, we have IPv6 already there for visitors, for employees, for students, and for the faculty, both for Wi-Fi and also for the IT labs. Yes, indeed, we, we have IPv6 for those. Yes, and I'd like to add that from the point of view of servers, Unicamp is, uh, has invested a lot uh, in uh, the uh, systems of the servers. Mm, and the systems are centralized. And the and uh, the problem that we had initially with the cloud stack that we couldn't support IPv6, we have some difficulties. Sometimes we can't uh, uh, use uh, IPv6 in those servers. So that's why we mentioned that the idea is to change that in the near future so that it will support IPv6. It was uh, uh, because at the beginning they didn't uh, see the, the importance that that uh, problem would have. There are servers of units that uh, have implant embedded IPv6 and those units provide IPv6 uh, services, such as biology, computer, IT, or the mathematics uh, institutes. So there's we, biology, we have some units that do offer IPv6 services, but it's not generalized. Most of the IPv6 traffic 